Hey there, welcome to a new tutorial with PSD Box. Today I have a quick tutorial for you. I'm going to show you the five, uh, the top five uh, adjustments you should make to every image to make it look better in Photoshop. Um, it's a quick tutorial with some tips and tricks to make your images look better uh, really quick. And I hope you will like it. I'm going to use Photoshop CC for this, but you can use any Photoshop version. If you have Photoshop CC, it's going to be a bit easier. And by the way, you can also do this in Lightroom as well. Uh, at least most of the adjustments that I'm going to make to this image. It's going to be something really easy and really interesting. I hope you will enjoy it and let's get started. Uh, before we start, a quick message from Mock Plus. Mock Plus is one of the easiest prototyping tools you can find out there. You can try it for free for Windows, Mac, Android and iOS. With a simple drag and drop you can make interactive prototypes for desktop, mobile and web apps really fast. It has more than 200 interactive components and more than 3000 icons and it has a really uh, fast learning curve. Everything is focused to, uh, on design, no code required, everything is drag and drop and you can test your uh, prototypes live using uh, QR codes. Uh, if you hurry up, they have a, an offer that expires on August 15th, so you know it. Uh, if you want to prototype faster, smarter and easier, try Mock Plus. So let's get down to business and I'm going to use this image right here, um, as you can see. And you can download this image uh, from my website, it's free, you can download it to practice this tutorial. And let's start with the top five adjustments you should make to every image. The first, the first um, adjustment is um, corrections, uh, distortion corrections and um, that kind of things, and straightening your image. Um, I'm using Photoshop CC as I said, so I can go to image and choose camera raw. I'm going to use camera raw for some of these adjustments, but if you don't have Photoshop CC and you don't have the camera raw as a filter, what you can do is use the crop tool. And it's actually sometimes easier, but with the, um, with the camera raw filter you can do some more advanced stuff. Uh, if, uh, with the crop tool what you can do is simply choose the straighten tool. And for example, I, as I can see, at least um, for my view here, this is not straight. And I can see that from here and also from this lamp over here. So what I would do is with this um, straighten tool, simply drag a line like that. And Photoshop will straighten once you let go and click OK and your image is straight. Now in Photoshop CC, what you would do uh, this is available in all Photoshop versions and it's really quick and sometimes it's enough. But if you want something more advanced with the camera raw filter, it depending depending on the camera raw version you have, you should click the transform tool over here. Um, I think in previous version it was somewhere here. But if you click here, uh, what you can do is first you can activate the grid if you want. And uh, I will use the guided um, transform, the upright tra uh, guided. So what you can do here is create lines. So first, the first line I would create is this one over here. So click and drag. But once I, if I let go, nothing will happen because Photoshop needs another um, line to correct the perspective, the other X. So I'm gonna uh, use this lamp, so just click and drag to make it there. And once I let go, you will see how Photoshop will straighten my tool. If you modify any of these things, Photoshop will correct the perspective and also corrects the distortion um, that may be created by, by this. So um, it's a bit more advanced than simply using the, the straighten tool. So I'm gonna leave it like this. You can see now the, the ground is straight and click OK. So that would be the first adjustment that I would create to any image. Next is chromatic aberrations and for that you need camera raw as well. I'm gonna show you how to do it if you don't have camera raw. In Lightroom it's really easy as well. Let's start um, by adding a hue adjustment layer. There are multiple way, ways of doing this, but I think this is the quickest. And it works well in, in many cases. What, um, chromatic aberrations, for people that don't know it, is this color halos that you see, especially around um, 
contrasty areas and especially on the corners of your image. In this case, we don't have the sky here. We have some chromatic aberrations here, but you can see it clearly around here. You can see this bluish line. It's really simple, uh, easy to remove. Simply click here, sample that color and remove the saturation. Now it's not perfect and it might affect other colors of your image if you have that. If you have um, this particular color tone on your image it might affect that so you should use the layer mask uh, to you should use the layer mask to to just focus the effect on of this adjustment only to the areas where you want to remove the chromatic aberration. And here down on the bottom you can you can move this around to affect the colors that you want. Um, let's go to camera raw. Uh, actually, I should have created a, let's create a snapshot and go back to our state so we can see the before and after. And let's go to filter camera raw. And here we have the camera, the lens correction, that camera icon. And if I zoom in, I can simply choose the, the fringe here. And we have the purple amount and the green amount because uh, the chromatic aberration usually comes in two flavors, purple and green, and variations of that, as you can see here. So he see here what I can do is just move this to the right and you can see it removes that chromatic aberrations. And just like in the hue saturation, I can change uh, the, the range of this. Let's click OK and move on to the next adjustment. And that's color cast. Um, depending on where you make your photographs and where you take them and depending on your lens and the light and everything um, Many images have color cast, especially if you don't have a, a color checker uh, to, to, to adjust your white balance on the camera. This um, is really easy to correct and in Photoshop it's a lot easier than in Lightroom just using levels or curves. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a curve adjustment and you can do this automatically in most images. We're gonna do this using the auto button, but not clicking it just like that. I'm gonna press and hold the alt key and, and click the auto button and you will see this new panel opens and here uh, the best way to remove the color cast is clicking find dark and light colors and also snap neutral midtones and I'm going to click OK and you will see how the curves uh, adjusted the curves only on the channel. So it's not affecting the RGB. While if you press the auto here without pressing the alt key, it will also it will only adjust the contrast. OK, so if you press the alt key and click auto, you will be able to change these things over here and it will correct the color cast and take a look before and after. So the next adjustment the fourth adjustment is uh, light correction another way of uh, another quick way of doing this in photoshop is i'm going to create a stamp is using another adjustment which is the brightness uh, shadows and highlights so just go to image adjustments and choose shadows and highlights this is not available as a layer so you have to do it this way from the menu this is really easy for example i'm going to start with the highlights you can see the dress of the bride is pretty overexposed and we're, we will not be able to recover all of the information except if you have a raw file. But if you're using a JPEG file, you can use the highlights, move this to the right, move the tone to the right, and then increase the radius. And take a look before and after. I recovered some of that information on the dress the same with the shadows if you have too deep two shadows that are too deep too uh, too dark you can increase this tone and the radius i think in this case is not necessary but anyways take a look before and after it's going to create a more evenly light image and sticking with the light we can go into camera raw now and use gradient, uh, radial gradients like this, for example, and I can add more light on, I have to restore everything here. I can add more light in the center if I want, or drop the highlights and the whites a bit, and increase the clarity if I want to focus the light over there, and things like that. Then with the hand tool, I can go to effects, and add some post-crop vignetting 
just to focus the line on the couple over there and maybe increase the feather a bit and increase the highlights to, to protect the, the writer's highlights and click OK and check that out. This is lighting correction made easy in Photoshop. And then the last but not least, I like to change a bit the tones of my image. And for that, I usually use color lookups. You can use gradient maps, um, especially with the new uh, photographic toning. You can have multiple um, colors here and you can choose, if you're on this sepia tone, you can, I don't know, maybe choose screen and draw, uh, drop the light of it. And I don't know, maybe color if you want to have this tone for your image. But usually, as I said, I use color lookups and I have lots of presets created by myself. I have a tutorial showing how to create your own color lookups, I think, I'm not sure. Um, just go to my channel and search for color lookups, how to create 3D LUTs in Photoshop and I think I have a tutorial. And you can create multiple copies of this and I don't know, let's choose maybe a wedding afternoon. Uh, you can see this tone that you get. Maybe it's too strong, so drop the first one a bit and increase this one and take a look before and after, just a touch of color. And let me compare now that to the original. We started from this and we went to this. And I'm making the tutorial, but otherwise you could do this in five minutes or less. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like my five uh, my top five adjustments and if you have any ideas uh, just share them uh, with uh, with us posting a comment on youtube or on my website that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and we'll see you next time